Welcome guys to your Gaming Techies VR show, a show where we look at PC VR, PSVR, and mobile VR, so you guys don't have to waste your time and money. And today, we're looking at a game on the Oculus Quest called Lies Beneath. Now, I was really looking forward to when Oculus announced this a few weeks ago because I'm a big horror fan. The art style has like a comic, a comic book style art in the game, and obviously it was built as an action horror game, so I was immediately intrigued. And as soon as this released, I was all over it. And I wanted to put it through its paces, so let's go ahead and show you guys a little bit of the gameplay and how this game actually looks and how it plays, and then we'll get into my final thoughts. Let's go ahead and do it now. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech, going for a recce is the gaming tech, gaming techie is the gaming tech, gaming techie. Alright guys, here we are with Lies Beneath on the Oculus Quest. We're using the Oculus Link today, so this is hooked up directly to my actual computer. Um, as you guys can see here with the cable that's going along my face and I need to move behind me um, So yeah, it's running on oculus link So this is the rift version that comes out in a couple of weeks that I got early access to uh, there is a quest version as well That's obviously almost the same as this with lower visual quality, of course So let's go ahead and test out the oculus link version running lies beneath I've been looking forward to this game since they announced it uh, because I'm a big horror fan um and an action fan, of course, and VR fan, so I'm excited to dive into this. We're going to do smooth locomotion. Do normal. Alright, guys, so here we are. Moving, uh, we're in, like, the tutorial section, I guess. It starts off teaching you how to play the game or how to use the controls. Move and turn using the thumbsticks. Easy enough. I'm liking the art style of this already, I'll tell you that. Just, uh, in this little tutorial section. Just, like, the, uh, for my hands and stuff. Continue using these controls, yep. Use the pause menu if you want to change your options, sure. Click on the thumbstick to run, yep. Basic controls like most other VR games, look down to see your belt holsters and grab your lighter. Alright, there's the lighter. The ember from the lighter will guide you. Okay, so that's cool. So when you light the lighter, it actually tells you the direction you need to go by w the way it's lighting up. So obviously it's telling me to go this way. And here it's telling me to go left, as you can see by the flame. That's an interesting way to do it. If your hands become bloody, you've lost health. Eat food to regain it. Blood is away from the hands, regaining health. Grab and release objects near your hip to holster them. Of course, step forward to begin. All right, let's go. Turn the page to begin. Lies beneath. Loving this car comic book style already. Uh, frightful felicitations. Uh, Fear fans, I've got a malignant masterpiece that is sure to mangle your minds. A young university student returning home, but will this haunting homecoming be a happy one? May's been May's been putting this trip off for a long time, but now she's all about it, all out of excuses and she's got no choice. It's time to go home. How was the ferry? It was alright. That's good. The weather's been strange lately. And then when the boat was late. Honestly, Dad. I'm more worried about you driving around in this hunk of junk. Very funny, kid. Hey, do you have a lighter, the lighter I gave you? Huh? Oh, yeah. But, you know, I don't smoke. It's not just for that, May. It's been in the family for a long time, and it's the time that you learn the truth. Watch out! Looks like they just got into a car crash. And just like that, freezing water freezes in like frozen knives. She claws at the water. Impossible to know the difference between up and down. But somehow, she draws in the energy she didn't even know she had. She lives. All right, so that's the story setup. Chapter one, end of the road. The blood in my gloves begins to freeze and I feel a crackle as it meets the cold air. I try to shout out for my dad, but my throat fails me. My lungs burn with effort. The smell of the burning rubber snaps my mind into focus and I'm gripped with sudden panic. Dad's still in the car. Oh wow, look at the car up there on fire. He's, well, again, this graphic style just looks so cool. Nothing like I've played before. I clamber away from the stone and the ice and find footing. There's a path here.
I feel tightening in my chest, and I suddenly know I'm being watched. I hold back a cry for help. Something isn't right here. Oh, we're definitely... Oh, shit. Look at that guy up there on the cliff watching over me as I move. Look at that thing. What the hell is that? And they won't even move till I move. I see you. I don't want to meet you, though. We're obviously going to, which is unfortunate. The car is totaled. Fire is consuming the very place I sat in minutes ago. Alright, this is real strange already and really creepy. It's empty, Dad? It's empty. Dad, where are you? Is this blood yours? All this blood leads you away. At least you survived the accident. Why didn't you look for me? It's a good question. Why wouldn't he look for you and just leave and then you got this blood coming out of him? He definitely didn't leave on his own. It's so dark, I can't make my way through. I look down, yes, I still have my dad's light area. Thank God for it. Even though... This is going to be all our light in here, apparently. You see how dark this is in here and how creepy the atmosphere is right now? Like. Oh, boy. Something's going to pop out of somewhere, I bet. Oh, there's that person that we just met up there. I think that's the same person that was up the top. Maybe not. I blink, trying to make sense of what I'm seeing. Wants us to go this way. Oh boy. This ain't good. This ain't good. I'm really creeped out already. There's a person standing here. There was a person standing there. Now it's just this little flesh thing or whatever this thing is that I just burned. Oh boy, the lights are turning off. Oh boy. That goes a later too. Can I turn it back on? Alright, thank god. Oh boy, here we go with the darkness again. Oh shit! That girl came out of goddamn nowhere. This game's already starting off with the uh, jump scares already, right in the goddamn beginning. Good, I'm out of the cave at least, see some daylight. Jesus Christ. These things in there couldn't be real. How bad did I hit my head? Yeah, well. Here's the blood, so I guess we should follow that path. Well, ain't going that way. Great, I'll have to find another way around. Yeah, I got that much. Huh? Maybe there's some crossing left. You light the lantern to save as a checkpoint. Alright. Nice. Cool way to do checkpoints. My heart rate starts to slow as I take in my surroundings. These words are not how I remember them. Yeah, I hope you don't remember them like this. Look at this creepy ass thing. What is that? Is that even a thing or is that like just a doll up there? I don't even know, but it's got eyes. I'm out. The village I grew up in isn't far. I remember camping here as a child. Just Dad and I. Him laughing at his jokes. Me not laughing at his jokes. This place feels weird. Not like it's sick. Oh, it's... That's interesting. That's for sure. I feel like I'm being watched and followed by every single sound effect in this game. I hope they're okay. Two missing people here on the board. Chapter 2. The Great Outdoors. Light fires to save your progress. Okay. So this is how we save. A campsite. I call out for help and my voice dies alone in the crisp winter air. Only silence greets me back. Man, this is getting creepier by the minute. Oh, here we go. Gross. This has been hanging here a while. Did one of those hunters leave it? What a waste. Someone killed that animal. Oh, look at all this nonsense. Oh, more meat and it's fresh this time. These people need to seriously clean up after themselves. Wait, is that a... It's a human head. Yep, that looks like a human head to me. And a bunch of, like, deer or, or whatever this is that they decided to hang and kill for God knows what reason. It's 
blood or a checkpoint here. And this forest is creepy. Oh, there. Oh, boy. Look at this guy. Uh, I think he's coming down here. He's coming over here. I should probably hide from him, right? Is he coming? Oh, he's coming. Maybe I could hide from him and wait for him to come by, go by or something. Is that a dead end over there? It looks like a dead end. He ain't moving. Yeah, he just stopped there, so I think that's a dead end. Maybe he'll turn around and I can run by him. Maybe. He's out. That's definitely a dead end. I'm out. Oh, he just saw me. I felt him turn around. I felt him turn around. I'm out. Go, 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 go. Oh, boy, he's right there. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now we're stuck in a goddamn maze. Oh, God. Oh, and he's right behind me. He's right next to me. Get out of here. Go, 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 go. Jesus Christ. I almost ran into the tree because I tried to look to see if he was still there. Yeah, you stay back there. Where you belong. I was close. I got some blood on my hands, though. I need to take care of this. I gasp for breath. My lungs are on fire. Stay focused, May. Stole a long way from home, and that thing's still out there. Yeah, whatever the hell that thing was. Get that blood off my hands. I wonder when they're going to give us a weapon here. I feel like we're about to be attacked by things, and I got nothing. Here's another uh, checkpoint. Just to open the door. Oh my god, look at this creepy ass thing. He's gone though, thank god. Cause it's like a, again, I got nothing to combat myself with. Look at this guy hanging by the door. Oh wait, he's got a gun. I shouldn't take it, but I need a gun more than he does. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I need bullets too. I just disappear and grab him. Oh, look at... Oh, here we go. Oh, it's not reloaded. I thought it was reloaded, but that stupid thing was out. More ammo. You know, these guys are creepy as hell. I thought these little things were creepy. These things are creepy. Oh! Oh, we probably got a poor chin like last time. Yep. How am I supposed to go by this thing? Never mind. He's out. The pain in my head resides as it burns. I can breathe again. Something far away seems to cry out. I need to burn them. Burn them all. That's great. Some more ammo, though. Can't expect to find much ammo out here. Better use it sparingly. Yeah, I mean, I figure we weren't going to get ammo in every five seconds. Oh, here we go. Oh, this thing is flinging shit at me, too. And I just missed him. That guy leave, too? This trap that they're trying to set on me. Get out of here. Now that thing is out here somewhere. We just saw him. There it is. Shit, there's two of them. Screw it, I'm out. Kill all these fools. Save that checkpoint. Get out of here with that trap. I almost fell for that. Almost walked right into that thing. Almost home. 
All the blood at the crash. There's no way Dad made it made it back. Is he there? We're going to find out. Definitely use that. Chapter 3 Light on a Hill. Can we open this up? Nope. Oh, we got an axe. Let's go. Now we got a melee weapon an axe. I'm sure someone boarded this up for a reason. Oh well. A few swings and I'm closer to home. How's this feel? That feels good. That feels nice. Alright guys, I think we're going to stop it right here. Uh, that gives you guys a little bit of an idea of what the gameplay is like. What you guys can expect. The art style in the game. Where the story is headed. And some of the weapons that you get in the game. And how the combat seems to be going so far. I'm going to continue playing this game, of course, uh, play uh, a bunch more of the game, and then we'll get to the table, and then I'll tell you my review of the game. Let's go ahead and do it now. All right, guys, so that was Lies Beneath on the Oculus Quest using Link, and this game is really cool. Uh, this game comes from the company Drifter. Uh, it's an Oculus exclusive, of course. It is on the Oculus Quest, of course, as you guys saw, and it is going to be, going to be coming to the Oculus Rift S here in a couple of weeks. I got early access to it on the Rift, which is why I was able to play it on the Oculus Link for you guys, and... Um, you know, the, the makers of this game, you know, D Drifter are known already in our community. They did the Robo Recall port on the Oculus Quest. Um, they also did Gunheart, if you guys are familiar with that game, which was like a Destiny type sh uh, looter shooter that was on the PC. So they are, they have branched out because this game, as you guys saw, is a single player narrative game. And there's not a million of those sitting on the Oculus Quest. You know, a lot of the Oculus Quest levels are smaller, more like, uh, 15 minute experiences that like are multiplayer type stuff. So it was nice to see another single-player narrative game, you know, coming on the Oculus Quest. And the reason that this one sticks out to me so much is obviously very apparent when you guys were watching the video, and that is the art style in the game. I really, really love the art style in the game and the way that the art style is presented. Uh, you know, the comic book style is something that I haven't seen in any other game that I've played in VR so far. Maybe there are others like it, but nothing that I've played so far that looks like this, and it, it just looks awesome. Um, the narrative in the game is another high point of this game. Uh, I love the way that they tell it, like, again, in, like, a comic book style, and the and the story is being told, like, as you're walking around, as you guys saw, you see, like, the little pieces, it kind of looks like it's stripped out of a comic book as you're walking across different parts of the environment and stuff. It keeps telling you the story, so that's a really cool way to do the story in the game, and the story is actually really good. Uh, you know, obviously, the story starts off where you're somebody who is going to visit a family, uh, you know, in Alaska somewhere, and you're driving in a car, Obviously, you get into a car crash because something comes out in front of you and kind of makes you crash. And then, you know, you get sprawled out of the car. You go back to the car and you find out your dad's not there, but you see a trail of blood. And that's basically where, you know, where your adventure basically takes fold from that point. And that's where the mystery begins. So, um, really, really digging the story. The gameplay, the game itself lasts about six to eight hours, depending on how fast you actually move through it. Uh, there's 20 chapters in the game. You guys saw me play through the first two chapters here. Uh, or we stopped at right getting to the third. And, you know, this is an, obviously an action horror game. It's an action horror game. There's some small puzzle elements. In, there are some puzzle elements in the game. This game is a lot more combat focused than a lot of people might go into it thinking because they might think it's just a straight up horror game. And it's not. This is a survivor horror action game. This is not like uh, jump scares every 10 seconds like, you know, some of the other horror games out there. This has a few, like, this has a few jump scares out there. And then the atmosphere itself is really what's causing it to obviously be more of a scary game but based on the atmosphere and, and knowing that you're always being watched, you know, stuff like that. But it's not a game that's like, you know, some of the horror, horror games that you can expect that are all about scary. This is a lot more combat focused, a lot more story driven. And the combat in this game is actually, you know, not bad at all. The, um, you know, you have the different variety of weapons. You have the handgun that you get to use. You got axes and sticks and stuff like that that you get to, you know, beat these creatures from uh, with. So... And it all works really well. It's really intuitive. Um, so story is a highlight. The graphics and the art style is definitely another highlight. Um, 
some of the uh, uh, things that are not so much of a big highlight is obviously you guys saw a little uh, a little bit when I went to go grab stuff. I noticed that you couldn't actually grab a lot of stuff in the game. Is you know coming from some of the other games, and this is not their fault. Obviously, this game has obviously been in development for a while. Uh, but, you know, coming off high heels like Half Life Alex and you know uh, Bone Works and stuff like that. Now in our minds, we're and we're all like, oh cool, everything's interactive, and you got to go back and be like, no, those two games were interactive. Not every single game is gonna be able to do that. Know, or make sense to do that. So uh, it's not a negative. It's just something to keep in mind. It's not the, everything in the world is not interactive, obviously. Um, and the other small negative, uh, and, and you guys saw that in the beginning, um, I thought, and, and it continued for a couple more chapters after the game was over, where I was like, huh, these environments feel kind of samey after the chapters. You know, you go sell the first two, it's obviously a snowy environment, and the environments weren't really changing, and a couple of other ones were like that the same way. There were snowy environments that you were traveling through. But as you get deeper into the game and you come across more chapters, it definitely changes. There's a lot more unique uh, environments that you're stuck in and a lot more visually appealing and a lot more visually interesting stuff that definitely happens towards later in the game. So keep in mind there is some visual um, you know, changes, some, some nice, interact, uh, and some nice en environments that are different from one another than what the game starts off as. It's just uh, the way it starts off makes you think it's going to be always just a snowy environment but, like I thought, but that's not the case. Um... So this game is twenty nine ninety nine. It's on the Oculus Store. It does have, it will have uh, compatibility between both. So you pay one price, and you do get them on cross buy. Right now, like I said, it's on the Oculus Quest. It releases on the Oculus Rift in two weeks. Uh, so if you get it now on the Quest, that will obviously auto unlock for you when it releases in two weeks on the Rift side as well. And like I said, we play this on the Oculus Link, so you're seeing the graphics and the art style of how it would look like on the Rift uh, because we're using Oculus Link. So uh, the reason that we couldn't use the Oculus One, uh, there's just a small bug right now in the game that uh, doesn't let you record audio, so I recorded the whole thing and uh, played it and then realized at the end that I couldn't record, uh, that I couldn't use the footage because there was no audio involved uh, in the recording, so they were able to give me early access to the Rift version so I could bring you guys this review and have audio, obviously, in a game that needs audio because it's a horror game and you obviously want to hear the audio, so that's the reason why you're seeing Oculus Quest gameplay, but that's, that's good because I'm sure a lot of people out there also like to see the Oculus Quest link now because a lot of people are getting into that now, so now you got to see what it would run like if it was on there uh the little bit that i did play on the oculus quest without the link worked pretty much uh extremely well there was a couple of times where there was a couple of hitches while you were running through the environment and stuff that i saw uh when on the oculus quest version which you obviously didn't see because in the video because that was like i said the oculus link version but there was a couple of hiccups as you were maneuvering through the environment and reading some of the headers where it would hiccup for like a second basically while you were reading it but nothing too jarring just a couple of hiccups here and there. Uh, the graphics are still good, not as good as what the, uh, the Oculus Link software did for me, but they're still really good, and it still looks like a really good game on the Oculus Quest, and it controls really well, all that stuff. So you're getting basically the same experience on both, just obviously uh, better looking on the Rift S or, or the Rift or the Oculus Link version as well. But definitely recommend that if you guys have an Oculus Quest or a Rift S or a Rift, uh, this is a really good game, and like I said, it, the art style and the story is really good. Art style is like nothing we I've played before, and I don't think there's many games out there like this. If you, especially if you're into the comic book horror style game, uh, this one's really interesting. The story stays interesting throughout. So, really exciting stuff. Really good job by them. They keep pumping out really good games, and it's definitely very different from all the other games that they did. Uh, you know, going from shooters to a single-player narrative game, uh, you know, it took some courage, and they did a really solid job with it. So... I'm really happy with the game overall, guys. If you guys have any questions about anything you guys have seen here today, as always, leave it down below. If not, thank you guys for watching. Till next time. Game in tech, game in tech, he is the game in tech, game in tech, he, game in tech, eating bread, he is the game in tech, going for a bread, he is the game in tech, game in tech, he is the game in tech, game in tech, he.